Welcome everyone to Hale Ho'onani. Could you please unmute and say hello, say your name, where you're from? Good morning, everybody. This is Michelle from Oregon. Good morning, everyone. It's Jim from Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm happy to be here. Hello, everybody. This is Akemi from Dayton, Ohio. Great to be here, too. Good morning, everybody. It's Dora from Southern California. Okay, great. And we have Mary and we have Cher and Catherine's coming on. So, um, Catherine, you want to say hello to everyone? <laughs> hello to everyone. I have missed you all dearly. Um, I'm so glad to be back home and I can't wait to see what today brings. I love you all. Thank you, Pastor. Oh, thanks so much. <clears throat> well, it's very good to see all of you. Um, welcome to Hale Ho'unani, which means house of praise in the Hawaiian language. Mm, welcome to church, a new kind of church. At conventional church, they offer you certainty. The pastor gives you all the answers. In our church, God would never rob you of the beauty of discovering new answers for yourself. Love is co-creative. Why use someone else's limited answer that was born in the past when you can create unlimited answers born from the present moment? There are forces in the universe that surround you. Why would God limit you from harnessing those forces and creating a new answer, an answer that has never been discovered before? Why repeat something old when you have the capacity to understand something new, why would God rob you of your own creativity? In conventional churches, they spare you from having to think for yourself. In conventional churches, you're welcome to dumb down and trust someone else besides yourself. In our church, God trusts you and invites you to be as brilliant as the forces that challenge you and to find the answers that not only solve your life, but help others solve their lives. It's the process of you becoming a truer, purer, more powerful version of yourself. In a conventional church, they skip the process. They make it easy. In our church, the process is everything because you are everything. You're worth the discovery. You're worth venturing into uncertainty and finding out that you are the most unique expression of God that this world has never seen before because you haven't even seen yourself this way before. God has never seen you this way before. God has never seen himself, herself, and themselves expressed through you in this way before. And it's exciting for God to find your voice, to find your vision, to find your moment. You are not allowed to take this moment away from God, the moment of you. If you're certain of anything in our church, it's that you got this. The divine spark of God within you never loses faith in you. That divine spark of God within you will call forth the angels and the forces of the universe with its faith to make sure that God has and will do this through you. In conventional churches, they stop the process by offering you certainty. And in our church, we start the process by opening up your creativity. In conventional churches, it's about God, the Bible, the pastor. In our church, it's about you. Because to find God, you have to find yourself. Because where God is, God is in you. Do you, any of you have any comments or anything you want to say at this time? 
Okay, great. So now we're going to have our opening prayer and go ahead and close your eyes and to breathe in and breathe out and breathing in, imagining that there is a white light of the Holy Spirit falling down from heaven cascading over the whole earth and into your body. And as you breathe, notice that the cells of your body are absorbing the sparkling white light of the Holy Spirit. And imagine that there is a waterfall of baby pink light coming down from heaven, cascading over your whole body and into the earth. And as you breathe, Imagining and realizing that the muscles and the flesh of your body is absorbing this pink light. And that you're glowing with this pink light of self-love. And we are going to call into the room your ancestors. You can invite your ancestors to come and see them in front of you in the room that you're in and our, your guardian angels, which is unfolding behind you, Jesus, who is the Christ, Mother Mary, and Father and Mother God. And I'm gonna call in also Yogananda, and Anastasia, and Dr. Hansen, and Pelehunuamea, the Hawaiian volcano goddess. Breathing. Imagine that you are at the center of a healing circle surrounded by healing angels. God is going to enter into this circle. God is walking into the center of the circle where you are. And notice now as God approaches you, if God is Father God, Mother God, Grandfather Spirit, Grandmother spirit, a non binary God, or a child. Sometimes God will come to you as a child. Which form is God appearing to you as now? God is going to show you something. See God reaching his hand behind your shoulder and touching your back. And you feel something on your back. Uh, oh, those are your wings. <laughs> you have wings. Breathe in and out fully. Just relax. Don't think about it. Let it appear naturally. How big are your wings? What color are they? And how heavy or light are they? What material are they? Are they metallic, feathers, clouds, crystalline? And go ahead, try to flap your wings a little bit. Now go ahead and try to fly. Are you able to go far or high? But how high do you go? How far do you go? And how long can you last in flight? Go ahead and ask your wings how old they are. What is their age? And now your wings represent your dream, the dream of your soul. If your wings are little, your dreams have just begun and notice how young they are. If your wings are medium sized, your dreams are in mid journey and notice how much strength they have. If your wings are big, your dreams are ancient. 
Notice how eternal your dream is. When your wings have color, it means your dream is historical, relevant to this particular time in history. If your ring, wings are crystalline or clear, white or gold, any light color, your dream is universal. Let your wings speak to you now. They are gonna send you a message and listen. Thank your wings, thank you wings. In Jesus' name we pray. Right now I invite you to write down what your wings said to you just now. Our Hawaiian word of the week is it ini, and it means your heartfelt desire, your dream. Now we learned dream before as moe uhane, but that was like moe moe, like let's go to sleep, the sleeping kind of dream. It any means dream as in something you want very much. So repeat after me, e any, e any. Very good. Now the way you say dream of the soul, ohane, uhane is soul. So dream of the soul, is iini oka uhane. Iini oka uhane. That means dream of the soul. Now, since we learned this before, you should remember it. The way you sign dream, you make a little fist and you touch your forehead and wiggle it out. I ini. I ini. Okay, so let's practice using the word i ini. I'm going to ask you a question and you answer by saying i ini and doing the sign language of i'ini. And then you're gonna use it, the word i'ini in a sentence. So you're gonna respond to my question by saying, the i'ini of my soul, which means the dream of my soul. Okay, so let's practice that once together. The i'ini of my soul. Okay, good. Okay, try it one more time. The i'ini of my soul. Okay, very good. So here we go. Okay, you ready? When your dream only benefits you and no one else, I think that's the any the dream of your ego. But when your dream benefits you as well as others, what, what kind of any is that? The any of my soul. <laughs> All right, good. Now, when your dream is interwoven with the dreams of everyone else on the planet, what kind of any is that? That's the any of my soul. Okay, good. When your dream comes true, it makes other people's dreams come true. For example, your dream of building a school makes the dreams of children come true. So what kind of any is that? That's the any of my soul. All right, so let's talk about the dream of your soul. The dream of your soul is essentially the meaning of your life. A lot of people don't know what the meaning of their life is. That's okay. Your job is to make meaning out of your life. Meaning is a moment. You make all these moments of meaning from your life. You string them together. You have all these pearls. The dream of your soul is the meaning and the purpose of your life. The dream of Jesus' soul is to be the Christ. The definition of Christ is God in human form. In other words, God's love in human form. Then he told us that we were just like him. We are love in human form. Please write this in your journal. God and me are love in human form. Thank you. 
Okay, so now think of a being or a personal object that's sacred to you. And remember we did this before I asked you to bring something from your childhood, like a stuffed animal or a toy or a binky. And when you were here for that service, you can use that same object or you can think of that same one. Catherine had her Snoopy, my mother had her owl. But it could also be a special tree in your yard or a plant, it could be your journal or diary, but something that is extremely special to you. It can even be your pet, but, but generally it's something that doesn't have an ego. So pets sort of count in this uh, regard. But in any case, it's something that you absolutely adore. So if it's an object or a plant, you love it so much, you've given it its own personality and name. And that thing is so easy for you to love, and it loves you back unconditionally. So in other words, it's, not, it's probably not going to be your grandkids, because your grandkids do not love you unconditionally. And, and generally, it's not going to be a human being. So um, for example, I chose a koala bear. So write down in your journal, what is a being or a personal object that is sacred to you. Think of it in your mind and then write it down. Okay, now you're going to extend the statement you just wrote towards your sacred object. So you just wrote God and me are love and human form. Now you're gonna write the same thing about that thing that is very sacred to you. So for example, I write koala is love in koala bear form. And then I ask koala, koala, are you love in koala form? And he's like, yes, I am. Okay. Okay, so go ahead and write your love statement about the sacred adored being or sacred adored thing in your life. And then you're going to write their name or whatever you call that sacred object and what then what form they're in. So blank is a love in blank form. This object or this being is your living Christ. So write in your journal the name of your beloved being and then is my living Christ. So blank is my living Christ. So for me, I'd write koala is my living Christ. A living Christ is someone or something that doesn't have an ego and serves as an example to you of what pure love looks like. It's easiest to use something that's with you every day that you can pray with. Some people pray with their Bible, their prayer beads, or their sutras, or a prayer shawl. Buddha prayed beneath a tree. The Bodhi tree was his personal embodiment of divinity. He could touch it, sleep with it, hug it, ask questions to it and get answers from it. The tree communicated with him just as your living Christ communicates with you. The more you develop your relationship with your living Christ, the deeper your communication with it becomes. Like an example is forensic testing. Detectives can get detailed information about a person from their clothing or something that they used on a daily basis because it has their DNA all over it. And it's similar to how animals can communicate by sniffing the grass or the bushes because other animals leave their scent there. Your living Christ stores all of your spiritual and emotional DNA, and it carries a lot of information about your soul. Your living Christ is your own personal object or pet or plant or even a place like a garden or a waterfall that has a personal relationship with you. 
and it responds to your soul and communicates with you in a very tangible, touchable, real, and practical way. Go ahead and write this in your journal. My living Christ is something of my very own that I can touch, hug, sleep with, talk with, and care for. It shows me how pure love operates in my life. So when I want to know what would my living Christ do in any, any given situation, so instead of asking, what would Jesus do? I ask, what would Koala do? So a friend of mine was trying to convince me to do something that didn't really feel right. It felt kind of unethical. So I asked, well, what would Koala do in this situation? Would he listen very intently? to the whole scam, and then decide, mm, no, not for me. I'm a koala bear. Koalas don't do yucky stuffs. Koala only do yummy stuffs. So if my friend insists, but you're my friend, you can't do this for me? Where's the line between being a friend and betraying who you are? And the only way to know this is to consult Christ, or in this case, koala, who's my living Christ in koala bear form. So if koala can't do it, I probably can't do it. If I do something that's against my Christly nature or my koala bear nature, I usually get a rash or I get sick. And then where's the friend of mine? The reason I almost got sick, probably nowhere to be found because they need to move on to someone who's not like me, who doesn't get sick when they go against their morals. So does this make sense? That the being who you adore in your life is a stand-in for Christ in your life. So some people use their Bible to get answers. I'm asking or proposing that you can use your living Christ to get answers, a being that has known you for a very long time that you've put all your thoughts and emotions into. Do you, any of you have any anything you want to share, or any thoughts around that? Lately, I've been feeling like really pressed for time or I'm running out of time or I don't have time. And, and this is kind of an ongoing thing anyway. Um, so then... When we were talking about the living Christ, you know, was, uh, my dog's name is Javi, so he lives in the moment. It's always in the moment. There's no, he doesn't care about the future. He doesn't care about the past. He's just so right now, you know, everything's the present and it's really important to pay attention. So we think about time. It's important, you know, not to project too much into the future you know of course we can make plans but you know the time is now the time is right there's a real magic to that so i just want to share that <laughs> thanks <clears throat> thank you we'll have a moment of sharing again i'll let this sort of ruminate in your head so that same friend of mine once they realized i wouldn't help them started to attack me. And I'm like, whoa, what's going on? I, you know? So after a while, if someone keeps attacking you, I, I just, I got fed up. I gave them the finger. And my friend was livid, was horrified. So escalated their attack on me. And they're like, you're supposed to be a loyal friend. Instead, you're giving me the finger. And so I said, okay, well, what would Koala do? No, koala bear doesn't have fingers, so he can't give them the fingers. So he he just sort of gives them the paw. And I, I kid you not, as soon as koala gave my friend the paw, the next day my friend got sick and they stopped attacking me. Now, when I give someone the finger, why doesn't it have the same result as when koala gives them the paw? And the difference is that I'm not using my full power when I give them the finger. 
I'm using my pain. On a scale of one to 100, with 100 being the most powerful, pain is like operating from a level zero. When Koala Bear gives them the paw, he's doing it from a place of deep self-love. So he's coming at them from a level 100. You can be cute and angry. And no matter how angry Koala gets, no one really sees a violent Koala Bear. You know, they just see Koala Bear. Self-love gives you a universal license to do extreme rule-breaking behaviors without tarnishing your image because love gives you the right. And when I say love, I'm talking self-love. When you love yourself, you can wear a leotard in public and be praised for it. Self-love gives you the right to be yourself in all your vicious forms and still be love in human form. Please write this in your journal. Self-love gives me the right to be myself in all my vicious forms and still be love in human form. So please write in your journal, what would my living Christ do? And think of a sticky situation you've been in recently. What would your living Christ do in that situation? And write it in your journal. So your living Christ does not have answers to everything. For example, Koala Bear doesn't help me get up in the morning. I have to ask angels to help me get up in the morning. If it were up to Koala Bear, we would just stay in bed all day and hug each other and look out the window. We, we would never get out of bed. So your living Christ is an example of pure love in your life. But your living Christ, just like God, is not an excuse to not live your life. Your living Christ is a support for you to go and live your life. If you need extra help, you can ask, you can take your living Christ with you, you can ask the angels, but your living Christ is limited for a reason. So that you don't give up your power to God. God purposely limits himself in the form of a being or an animal or an object limits himself physically to a single aspect of his totality. And in that way, God will never take your power away from you, even if you want to give it away. When you are truly expressing the divine spark within you, you don't give your spark away, not even to God. You become a brighter spark of God. Love grows when you express love, not when you give it away. Giving away your power is not a gift, it's throwing it away. You have to keep the light within you and shine it, not give it away to someone else, even if that someone is God. God wants to shine through you, not take your shine away from you. Your living Christ is limited and doesn't give you the answers to everything to ensure that you never make anyone a more true or more pure expression of your divine self than you. So, most churches talk about the Jesus who likes children and builds furniture. That's the Hallmark Channel version of Jesus, the lumber sexual with a beard and the chiseled jaw who definitely wants to take you on a date and raise puppy dogs on a farm. That's boyfriend Jesus. That's my mother's favorite version of Jesus. But today, we're talking about badass Jesus. 
the real Jesus specifically wanted to tear down the Roman Empire. Love in its most vicious form is justice. To enact justice, one must be completely neutral, take no sides, be matter of fact, and bold. When Pilate asks Jesus, whose side are you on? He says, I am on the side of truth. Jesus says, worship no one but my father who lives inside of you. What he means is worship no one outside of yourself. Worship what already exists within you. The kingdom of God is within. You are already that which you worship. You are already love. You are already God's loving energy. Jesus said, know that and be saved. And Jesus is saying, why are you running away from what is within you and looking for it outside of yourself? And because of that, Jesus is perceived as a revolutionary, a political threat. People are following him through the desert. And even as their lives are threatened, he tells them, do not bow down to someone else. God repeatedly tells the Israelites and Jesus tells his disciples, you're no one's slave, stop acting like one. And God sends the same message through his prophets as he does through Jesus. That when you stop giving your power away, you stop hating the people who oppress you. If you stop giving your power away, they cease being your enemy. And you would not have to fight them. War is only necessary when you have relinquished your own personal power. As a people, you have given your power away and your descendants, the future generations, are born into a system of slavery you helped perpetuate because you gave your power away. And you hear the news stories about a husband killing a wife or a vice versa. You need to fall in love with someone so hard that you, when they betray you, you want to kill them. And it's the same person you fell in love with, the same exact person, but suddenly your lover becomes your enemy. How'd that happen? Because you give your power away to that person. And there's a difference between being disappointed and heartbroken and being betrayed and vengeful. And the difference is that the brokenhearted person can heal, survive, and move on. The betrayed, vengeful person cannot heal. They must destroy their destroyer in order to end their pain. Their pain cannot be transformative. It's just pain. When you heal, pain is transformative. When you do not heal pain, It's just pain. The spiritual alchemy that Jesus taught, he gave it a sweet name. He said, forgive your enemies. And what he meant was, bitch, I told you he was a lying son of a bleep. You should have never given all your power away. You shouldn't have given him all your love, including that portion that was meant for yourself. Forgiving your enemy means give him this gift. Let him survive on his own without you. Forgiving your enemy means cutting him loose. Cut that umbilical cord that ties him to you. He's using you because you give him all your power. Forgive him. Cut the cord. And the moment that you forgive him, he'll stop being your enemy. He'll stop oppressing you. Why? Because he can't. You cut the cord. How's he going to get your power? You stop supplying him with it. Now he has to get his own power. Good luck. Your oppressor doesn't want you to forgive him. He wants you to stay mad at him because that's how you supply him with your power, your life force, your chi, your energy. When you're mad, you're producing a lot of energy. You're like a nuclear power plant. And your enemy can basically plug into your anger, charge his iPad if you want to do. When you're angry, you're producing power for someone else to use. 
And as soon as you forgive him, he's like, oh, no, 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 don't, don't, no, no, don't, ah, don't do that. You're like, I forgive you. Your destiny is no longer my destiny. You're free to go because I'm no longer mad at you. I guarantee you that your oppressor and your hater doesn't want you to forgive them, doesn't want to be free of you because they get so much out of you by enrolling you in their drama and keeping you stuck in their chaos. A lot of people are going to call that love or say to you, if you love me, you won't leave me. You know, you're not being a team player. You're not being a good friend. You're not supporting me. If you truly love someone, you set them free. And see if they love you after you've forgiven them. When Jesus says, turn the other cheek and forgive your enemy, he doesn't mean let them, he doesn't mean let them use you. You know what I mean? He means turn your energy inward to serve yourself, not outward to serve someone else. When I say Jesus is a badass and he's ruthless, what I mean is that when someone is robbing you of your energy, Jesus doesn't say to comfort them and forgive them for they know not what they do. He says to forgive them because they know not what they do. And so to protect the both of you, let them go. Don't focus on loving them because they don't know that they're drowning you. Focus on yourself so that they don't drown you. Being Christ-like means being a sharp cookie, knowing dark from light, even when dark tries to disguise itself as light. Being Christ-like means seeing through people, seeing the truth that they don't see. It means being ruthless about knowing who you are and what you stand for and how you honor yourself. Because honoring God is honoring yourself. No matter how much they humiliated Jesus and told him that his life was worthless, he was ruthless about loving himself. Don't let people take your self-love away because they'll take the Christ in you away. And you will never let that happen. Because the God within you will make sure that you forgive them. Giving your power away is like being a dog. Everyone loves dogs. Dogs are lovable. If you give up your power, people will love you. It's in a dog's nature to follow their owner and do whatever their owner says. If their owner is a drug dealer, doggy's living the high life. But if the owner goes to jail and later becomes homeless, doggy's living the low life. When you give up your power, you are a victim to the circumstances of life. When you surrender, you are a co-creator of your destiny. Giving up your power is the opposite of surrendering. Surrender is flowing in alignment with the universe, listening deeply to your higher self and surrendering to what is authentic. Giving up your power is resisting being a powerful co-creator, ignoring what you know is true, and listening to someone outside of yourself. That is why God asks us to surrender so that we can co-create with the forces of the universe. And it's also why Jesus warned us to never give up your power, because once you give up your power, you are going against the forces of the universe. Do you have any thoughts right now? Okay, so we're gonna move on to our next section. It's called Lighting the Stars. Uh, the dream of my soul is to have a little bit of land in Hawaii so that all the people in our church can come and you can stay in a little private cabana and 
be surrounded by community gardens and animals. And then we can have, we can meet in person. We can do sacred ceremonies and have sacred conversations like a yearly spiritual retreat. And when our ministry grows, we'll do this. So I wanted to dedicate two minutes of our Sunday service to something called lighting the stars where you each light a star for Hale Ho'anani. And that can be very simple, like praying on your own individually that the angels help our church grow. Or it can be a, a concrete action, it could be inviting a friend. Now, Sophia was going to lead us in this conversation. She's moving um, right this weekend, so she's not here. But maybe you can think of something to light a little star, maybe once a week, like Tuesdays. You say a quick prayer that the angels will help our church grow. Something real simple like that. I see y'all writing in your journal. That's great. Okay, awesome. So let's let's do our closing prayer. Go ahead and close your eyes and breathe in and breathe out. And breathing in, imagining that there is a waterfall of gold light from Mother God coming down from heaven and cascading through your whole body and into the earth. Breathing in, that gold light is going to find all the parts in your body that are a little clenched up and filled with stress. And it's going to wash through those areas of your body and gently wash them into the earth. Breathing, knowing that this week, because you are all healers, you are also absorbing the stress of the earth and humanity. And for that, the angels thank you and imagine them around you now, waving their wings, trying to help your body heal from the healing work that you've been doing this week. Breathing, seeing like rain, gold light of Mother God falling upon you, washing away all that wonderful healing work that you've been doing all week and renewing you again. And as you do that, you see your wings growing a little bit longer and a little bit longer. Breathing in and out, we pray that this week that the angels and God continue to remove all of your stress and fill you with energy and light and protect your body and protect your animals and protect your loved ones and your home and everywhere you go. And with that gold light of protection, and love and sacredness. Allow the angels to close that force field around you to protect you this week in a gold light, a gold light emanating from you. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Wonderful. So now we are ready for our round of goodbyes. I want to say goodbye to everyone. And I'm so glad that I had the opportunity to, to, to be here on today. I've, I've thought about the church and how much I've missed everybody. And I'm just so glad to be back. I love you all. Bye-bye. Thank you, Pastor Vicki. This is a really great service. Um, I'll be kind of reviewing my notes this week and you know, watching the replays, and, and I hope everybody, um, you know, gets something personal that helps them keep their power and not give it away, and, um, you know, enjoy the, the benefits of that. Thank you. Awesome, and so thank you, everyone else. Um, goodbye, everyone. Thank you.
Yeah. 